welcome to track number six of Apocalypse. God bless you. On me. Sweet anointing. Anointing. There shall be no more curses. Neither shall the gates be shut anymore. Yes, Jesus. Yes. Yes, Jesus. You shall be blessed. You shall be blessed. You shall be blessed. You shall be blessed. blessed. God bless you. Revelations chapter 16, verse 1. And I heard a great voice come out of the temple saying, Go to the seven angels. Go and pour out. And the first one poured out. And then all these different disasters began to happen. Is that not so? Then verse 5. It says, And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was and shall be, because thou hast judged us. For they have shed the blood of the saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Amen. I want you to know something here. That one of the great um, revelations, amen, is that God rewards us in a similar fashion to what we have done. Do you see? He said, thou art righteous because you have given them blood to drink. Why did God give them blood to drink? Because they shed blood. Mercy. Sometimes people cannot relate what they are experiencing to what they have done. He says, thou art righteous. That is righteousness for you to have what you have done. See that you have just showed huh? is amplifying and helping. If God takes you up and decides to help you and amplify your little efforts, the efforts you are making in your marriage, the efforts you are making at work to be good in your work and to be promoted, if God takes it and amplifies it, don't be surprised. Because he said, thou art righteous. Why art thou righteous? Because you are giving them blood to drink. Because you have correlated what you are giving them to what they have done. Thou art righteous, O Lord. Thou hast given them blood to drink. Because they have shed the blood of the saints. And whatever you reap is far in excess. They, they just shed blood, but now they are drinking. They are drinking blood. You are helping me to preach. You are helping the gospel. You are helping God's work. Then God said, thou art righteous because you have helped the work of your saints. Because they have helped your work. And you have helped them much more. When I look at my life, look, I have not earned or had a fraction of what a lot of people have had. But I can tell you something. That God somehow has given me grace to use the little that I have had eh, in my life. And sometimes I look at it and I, I am amazed. That it's I don't have to actually act. But even with God's grace, wisdom, you can go much further. Look at what some of the American churches have. Huh? For instance, I went to uh, Los Angeles. I went to preach. And I was invited to preach at a missions conference. When I finished preaching, I was talking about how we have a missionary in Jamaica, missionary in St. Lucia, missionary in Trinidad, missionary in uh, Guyana, Missionary in uh, 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 Gambia, Cameroon. Missionary in Nigeria. We are spreading out in Nigeria. We are missionaries in uh, uh, Uganda, Zambia, Ethiopia, Malawi, Botswana, South Africa, Tanzania. I mean, these are people that we send to. And we pay for. We buy check buildings. We, we finance it. It's not, they don't know anybody there. We have to look after them and their families. Sometimes there are two, sometimes there are four. Buy cars, rent houses. With this, the money that we collect in the churches, this is what we use it for. And who do I have in my church? Who do I have? It's just you. People just like us. That church that I went to, the film stars that are in the church. The day I preached, Denzel Washington was there. That's his church. Do you know Denzel Washington? That's his church. He was, he was right there in church. After, after preaching, he was looking for me. He was coming to, to find me. 
And what happened was that we were held up with some other stars. <laughs> we call it Church of Stars. Magic Johnson, his wife, and other stars, film stars, just film stars. They were the only church. I did an altar call. I said, come to work for God. They were all there. Magic Johnson's wife and all those film stars. After I finished preaching at the missions conference, the missions pastor came to me and said, I feel so ashamed. I said, why? He said, we don't have even one of such a missionary that we have sent anywhere. We don't have anything like that. It's a missions conference to which you have been invited to preach. We don't have even one person, like a long-term missionary who is being financed on a long term to be there. And when they were building their church, Denzel gave $5 million. Magic gave $5 million. This is the hammer they were paying. $5 million. $5 million. Look at you here struggling to give $1,000. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at you here. Struggling to give these amounts of money. I mean, you are extracting virtually your life. Some of you are not extracting your life, but some are. And I look at what God has helped us to be able to do. Oh, I realize that, look, this life, eh, there are more things that help you than you can imagine. Because you can be in Switzerland, you earn a lot, 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 lot of If you don't have a certain mind, you don't have certain thoughts, certain ideas, it will be as though you have never been blessed. Look, there are people who live in Geneva, they live in Ghana now. It's as though they never lived here. They never lived here. You don't see, they don't have a house, they don't have anything. They don't, and they are now in Ghana. <laughs> Forgive. And it's as though you don't earn much. Because God hasn't given... One day I spoke to one man. He was doing a lot of business. And I, told, I gave him some advice. I said, do this. I told him, do this particular thing. Some years went by. He doesn't even come to church. But he was telling my brother. I said, the only thing I have is that thing that bishop asked me to do. It's the only thing that I possess. The rest is all vanishing to thin air. Because I told him, I said, you are working for nothing. If you don't do this particular thing, everything will evaporate. You watch and see and everything evaporated except what could not evaporate. Rich. Oh, yes. In fact, if you don't have wisdom, there was another guy, he was working for a very rich company. And I spoke to him, I said, do this with your money. You do this and do this. So he did. He said, later on, eh, some of the top guys were saying that, how did he have this to do that? Because they don't have anything. They earn more than he earns in that same place. Oh, yes. Look, God can help you in ways that you cannot count. Because you can have a lot of money. I have members in my church who have had million dollars before. I'm talking a literal million dollars in their bank account. They don't have anything today. That I even have to help them. Look, if God doesn't help you, you pilot said, you see, God, eh, if you are not pleasing Him, you may be on a boat, you'll be sleeping. They will come and wake you up. And uh, go and ask Jonah. They will wake you up. I knew the cause of the problem that we are experiencing. <laughs> I knew the cause of the problem. Then, you may be thrown into the sea because you are not doing what God says. Then a whale will eat you and you will pray. They will say, Lord, save me. Say, okay, vomit. Then he will give the, the whale a disease called hyperemesis gravidarum. <laughs> The, the, the whale will vomit. Hyperemesis means hyper, uh, increased vomiting. Hyperemesis. Oh, oh. Then it will come out. Now, Jonah had changed his mind. And he thought he was blessed. He went to preach. And God saved the people. He didn't want God to save them because he had suffered to come. God, he, he didn't want God to save them. So he was now under a tree, enjoying the shade. And God sent a worm to come and eat the tree that was giving him the shade. God is the one who caused the tree to grow. And when the tree was growing, he caused a worm to also come and eat the tree. God can bring you to Geneva. He can bring you to Zurich. Then he can give you a job. That is the tree. Then he can send a worm to eat the tree. The same God who made the tree can send a worm to eat the tree over you. And it will be as though there was never a tree. 
Look, your life is in the hands of God. I'm telling you something. I'm telling you. Let us depend on God. And let us trust God. Are you listening? I'm preaching a very good message. I'm preaching a very, very powerful message. Yeah. Blessings are not things that you create for yourself. God said, you have given them blood. Thou art righteous. You see, it is commensurate and proportional and in the same dimension. It was blood. The issue was about blood. Now when you give an offering, the issue is about help. So it's help we are talking about. There are so many people who love me. If I ask them for cars. Look, in my church today, if I ask for cars. One rich man in my church, he came to me and said, Bishop, me, I know you don't respect cars. If, I, if you respect it, I would have... I will sort you out long time. You see, he's the type of person you tell you, say, my car outside is worth hundred and something thousand dollars. That's parked there. You tell you, you tell him what I'm wearing is worth this thousand dollars. It's what he's wearing. He's that type of richest person. He said, Bishop, I know you don't respect cars. Because I don't, a car is nothing to me. I don't struggle over cars. I don't waste my money or my time on cars. When I'm going to preach somewhere, I call somebody with a nice Benz. I say, come and carry me to that place. Why should I buy something I can use every day? I can save my hundred thousand and then just be using your hundred thousand. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. And I choose them in colors. If I want black, I take black. If I want gray, I take gray. Or white. Last time somebody saw me, said, that's your white car. I just laughed. I said, <laughs> <laughs> Give them blood. Thou art righteous. Thou hast given them blood. God help you. Amen. God has used me to help a lot of people's lives. And sometimes I've experienced God's help in my life also. Because I've sold help. And sometimes I reap help. Not even money, but help. Help. Sometimes I've sold love in people's lives. Look, throughout this journey, I've been overwhelmed by the love. You come, it's like the people want you. It's me, God. Because it could easily not be like that. I could come and it's like, hmm, our man has come. You know our man, he has come. And he said we should come. So we are going. Or even the church could easily not have grown. Yes, it could easily not have grown. Why should I go in America and you have a Jewish temple, round, big like a mosque, huge. Why? It is the grace of God. Yeah. It's just the grace of It's not because I, I, mean, I have not been, most of those I have not been there before. I don't know where they are. I cannot go. It's just God who is working. When I tell people I don't know what I'm doing, they don't believe. I tell them I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just following. Trusting God. Thou hast given them blood. Don't be surprised if God lifts you up because you have lifted up the sound of my voice by radio or by TV. Don't be surprised if God raises your voice. Yes. Don't be surprised. He will he, he, the, the thing that you saw, eh, expect it. Eh, expect it. Expect it. And when the angels will say, Lord, thou art righteous. Thou hast blessed Pastor Jimmy. Thou hast given him this because he has also sowed that thing in people's lives. Yeah. And there are many things that are more than money. Would you would you like me to give you money to feed five thousand people? Or would you like me to give you authority to create food for 5,000 people whenever you need it? Which of the two do you think is more power? Uh-huh. That's what Jesus had. He didn't have money. But he could make food anytime that he wanted to make food. He did it twice. 5,000 and 4,000. Choose which one is greater. Money is not the greatest thing. There are many things that are greater than money. A man stood in my office. He said, my trousers... He said, I bought special trousers from, he mentioned the shop in, in, in London. He said, they don't fit me. He said, because I'm dying. The doctor has given me this number of days to die. That's what he told me. Because God has sent a worm to eat the tree. And then he went and brought another friend who was dying. The two of them came there. And they said, I was having a crusade. They said, can we come to your crusade? I said, come. If it were not for that you were dying, you would never ask to come to my crusade. Come. I laid hands on one. One of them is there. One is still alive. 
What hast thou that thou didst not receive? Or who maketh thee to differ? Who maketh thee to differ from another? Who made you be a little different? It's God. When your eyes are on Him, you see, this book of Revelation helps you to see that everything that is happening is God. That's, that's the greatest message from this book of Revelation. God is the one who makes people succeed. God is the one who makes people fail. God is the one who allows even for you to be defeated. God is the one who allows the battle to turn in your favor. God gives time limits for everything. Everything is God who is doing it. That's the greatest lesson. That's what I have learned most by looking at this behind the apocalypse. I can see that it is God. God is the one who is at work. Amen. Thou art righteous, O Lord. Thou hast given them blood to breathe. <laughs> I'd be surprised if God gives you peace. Because you have brought peace to somebody's house. A thousand times over. He gives you a thousand times more peace of mind. Yes. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. God is good. God is great. Give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right, verse 13. He said, And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Huh? For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Amen. Amen. Now, when the revelation happened, the man saw that what was actually coming out of the mouth of the dragon and the mouth of the beast were not words, but they were spirits. <laughs> wow. wow. Come. When... Stand here like this so that these people can see you. This group here. No, no, face here. Speak. Speak. Say Jesus. Jesus. Uh-huh. If the apocalypse happened, the cat is you will see something coming out of mind. Say, so, ah, what is that? And these people too. Say Jesus again. Jesus. Jesus. No, no, face here so they can see when it's coming out. Jesus. Uh-huh. Now face this way. So these people can see. Say it again. Jesus. Uh-huh. What is actually coming out of his mouth? No, not frogs. <laughs> No, not frogs. Not frogs. Jesus said the words I speak. Yeah. And notice, pastors who want to move into miracles. He says they are spirits working miracles. That's how I work miracles at crusades. And when I'm ministering, I meet with my mouth. I say, two people there are receiving. Take it one. Take it two. I'm working miracles. The, the, the things coming out of my mouth, working miracles. That's why you can stand somewhere and the man of God can say, there is a lady, God is touching you. Your life will never be the same from tonight. I'm working miracles by the spirits that come out of my mouth. Yeah, he says, and I saw three spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the beast and of the dragon. Working miracles. People don't know how, sometimes when I'm ministering to people, I'm laying hands of people, you know, from experience. If the anointing will not flow, then it means, usually, from, from my spirit, nothing comes out of my mouth. One day, one of my instrumentalists decided to play a song. I don't like when instrumentalists play songs that I know. But when you play songs, then I can only think of that song. So I couldn't worship, I couldn't speak. So I became quiet, paralyzed, spiritually. So throughout that ministration, I couldn't minister. So I, I didn't minister, actually. I was just laying hands, but I was not ministering. But when the anointing is coming and you are thrown, you begin to work miracles by what is coming out of your mouth. One time I was speaking the Lord said, work miracles. Say, say. That's why when the Father is not magic or subconscious, what I was saying, the Spirit is moving here. This section here. Receive it. It's not that He's doing psychological something, but He's working miracles by the words that are coming out of His mouth. That's why He said, all of those in this section, receive it. Ah, that's how to work miracles. That's how to work miracles. Yeah. This section. All those in this section. Receive miracles in Jesus' name. Yeah. 
Jesus said to the centurion, the centurion said, don't come. Stand where you are and say something. And that's why Jesus will say something. And say, receive a miracle and God's blessing. And so, hands may not even be laid on you. But can you already feel the power? You realize that there is something that you feel. And it is like God's power is actually working something in you. That's how we work miracles. By the spirit that is coming out of the mouth. Yeah. I saw three spirits like frogs. You see, God is showing us all the negative words, but it's to show you how it's working. And then what does he do? Gathering the people for church growth. You see, church growth, a time has come, you have to do church growth by what is coming out of your mouth and by miracles. Gather the kings of the earth. Do you want a gathering anointing? Learn from there how to gather. (laughs) Read it and see. Through miracles and speakings of words. That's why when the people come, you must bless them. You must encourage them. You must tell them God's blessing and God's favor. Tell them they shall overtake. They shall subdue. They shall pursue. It shall be well with them. In Jesus' name. And you are working miracles. Over the congregation. And over the members. Take it one. Take it two. Take it three. Take it four. The reason why we say take it four times is because of the four corners of the earth. By the time we have covered the four corners of the earth, we have covered all peoples. Everybody that is here is receiving. Hey! And some of the miracles that you need, they, they have to be created by the pastor's mouth. Because it's a kind of miracle that we can't easily explain. I see you moving out. You see, it's God who knows where you are in. And I say, I see you moving out now. Take it one. And you see that God is taking you out of something. I saw three spirits like frogs. It happened that these ones looked like frogs. The other day, I was there and I had a vision. I saw a bed. And I've been coming to that room and I told people, there is something in this room. There is something in this room. But they didn't listen to me. So, one night, the anointing was very strong. And the noise came again. I said, you see, there is something here. Then suddenly, out of the bed, bed started coming from the mattress. And I said, look at the spirits that have been here. Harassing your people. May every flying bed and every hateful bed that is in your house, that is in your bed, that is in your mattress, that is an occultic power that is fighting you. May God fight it in Jesus' name. We find the power in the name of Jesus. That's how we work miracles. By the words that come out. One day a brother came to give an offering. As he was putting his hand into the basket, I held his hand and I lifted it up. He had 5,000 CDs, about, about four, $5. And I held it. I said, oh, this is a car. That's all I said. So this is a car. Can you believe it? The following week, somebody called him from America and gave him a car. No, I'm telling you. It's like magic. You see, and what are these? These are spirits coming out, working miracles. Last year, last year, Last year, when I was when I was raising these funds for the Healing Jesus Crusade for the year, there was a soldier sitting in the front there. He said, "Oh, he wants to give a testimony." I said, "Oh, we don't have time." He said, oh, I, "I need to give it." So I said, "Oh, no, no, no! I'm raising my funds." But I didn't know what he wanted to say. So I finished raising everything. Then I said, "You know, you know, what, 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 what did you want to say? Say it." He said, "Oh, members like yesterday, some years ago, he was in the cathedral in Accra, and." Receiving an offering, I I said people should give 100,000 CDs. And he said he didn't have money at all. Something said, go to your car, get your checkbook and write 100,000. So he went and he brought the check. He said when he came to put his offering in, I held him on his shoulder. And I said, you have a UN job. He was a soldier in Ghana. I said, you have a United Nations job. So he said, he was there. He went along. He was posted, not to United Nations, to uh, Kigali. Do you know Kigali? (laughs) Musangani, Kisangani, Kisangani. 
He went to Liberia. He went. He said he was in Kisangani on uh, Ghana Army peacekeeping when they called him that he has been appointed United Nations something, 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 and that he should he should he should return from that place quickly, quickly. <laughs> and then he was brought out of that Kisangani. He told me, he said, people who say that. Uh, there, there should be war. They said they have not seen anything. They said you don't know what is a war. DRC said you don't have an idea. He said so now you go to church and you see the pastor struggling because of five dollars. He said he, he, he will be so disturbed. Struggling to raise funds to get five dollars and ten dollars. These are the people that Christ died for. And he becomes so disturbed and just pays for everything. He said he was there when they called him. Come! And he said, that is how come he was in America right there because he works in the United Nations now. Appointed, called for, removed from Kisangani. <laughs> he said, I remember it clearly. He said, I have not forgotten. You put your hand on my shoulder. And I didn't even remember. I didn't even know. He said, oh, I, I brought it. I just, you just put it. I said, you have a UN job. Amen. I worked a miracle with my mouth. Right. I worked a miracle. I worked a miracle. That's why you must convert blessings. These Jacob and all these guys, when they were dying, Jacob and Esau, what are the names of the two boys who were quarreling over Isaac's blessing? Jacob and Esau. Yeah, they wanted their father to say something. Just say a word to me. Anything, just say it. And I'll be blessed. Say it. And one time I was preaching, and the Lord opened the eyes of a certain lady. And she saw a big angel. Every time I said, God is doing something. God is giving you a blessing. He's opening the door. He's giving you a car. He said, he saw an angel throw a parcel congregation and then smaller angels will carry the parcel to people to put it in their hand like that and we're just sharing it sharing it sharing. receive it in jesus name tonight god is answering a prayer that you have prayed for a long time in jesus name receive it now one two take it three take it four every long standing prayer has been heard tonight in jesus name Amen. I saw three spirits like frogs. If you were to see me in the spirit when I'm ministering, you would see spirits coming, working miracles. That's how Jesus worked miracles. By spirit. Red, only when he was in the most difficult environment did he lay hands. He would not lay hands on people. The way to minister, even God, the way he created heaven was by speaking words. Let's see. Let that be. Receive the baby you are looking for. Receive the husband you are looking for. May God heal your husband's mind in Jesus' name. May God touch your wife in Jesus' name. Let there be where there was no peace in Jesus' name. Ah, I feel it. See, that one too is a miracle. I feel it. Because before you say I feel it, you don't feel it. But as soon as you say I feel it, the feeling comes. <laughs> Are you understanding the ministry better? Yeah. That's how it is psychological. It's the working of miracles. This, this apocalypse shows us how miracles are worked. Thank you. <laughs> this apocalypse shows us how miracles are worked. Words. Can, oh, do it. When you go speak on the people, bless them. Bless them. I told one brother he was traveling. I said, may you find what you are going to look for. He, he thought I was cursing him, but I was blessed. I said, may you find what you are going to look for. Because many people don't find what they are looking for. <laughs> so if your father said, may you find what you are looking for. What you are going there to look for. It's a very great blessing. Yes. That's why there are some people, you think they are superstitious. But when they are traveling, they will call you and say, I'm traveling. Yes. Sometimes when I speak to Bishop Duncan William, then he will speak. You see, one day the Lord told, told me to go and sow a seed in his life, so I went to see him. So after I said, well, I need to see you. So he said, oh, come. So I went to a small room with him, and I gave him. Then he was going. I said, Bishop, please pray for me. I said, yeah. Then he put his hand on me, and he said, Lord, may he have the upper hand in every crisis. Hey! I didn't hear the rest of the prayer. That's the only thing I heard. 
that when there is a crisis, may you have the upper hand, upper hand, upper hand, upper hand. Hey, 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 hey. You see, you can never think of praying that prayer for yourself. That's not what I would have prayed for myself. I have not thought of that. I have not thought of crisis. I have not thought of upper hand or lower hand. But he just said, may he have the upper hand in every crisis. I receive it in Jesus' name. May you also have the upper hand. Have the upper hand. May you have the upper hand. In Jesus' name. Amen. That's how miracles are worked. Apocalyptic revelations for you to see certain things. What is going on? And the man of God is saying that in that section there, here, there are ladies that are going to receive blessing, wedding dresses this year. Receive it. One. Take it. Two. Take it. Three. Take it. Four. In Jesus' name. Some would think that is a joke. But wedding dresses will just go. Ah. Give the Lord a shout of praise, somebody. Give the Lord a shout of thanksgiving, somebody. Give the Lord a shout of praise, somebody. Hallelujah. All right. How many are surprised that Revelation is a very interesting book? You never thought that in this book are so many apocalyptic ideas and revelations. You are blessed because the Lord told me to come and share this with me. I don't share these things with people. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. 